In today's video, we are going to be looking at how to paint and glaze using acrylics yeah. on textured pieces. Yeah. This is part two of this fabulous series on texture. My name is Jess. Oh. This is my dad, Stephen. Really? Yeah. I'm your father? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Dad's the one that did all the art. I'm the one that filmed it. Now we can rock and roll. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> Last time we were looking at how to actually make texture on canvas mm. using modeling paste with household items. Yeah. So that's what we covered. If Meshy you... stuff. Mesh. And this is what it looked like. If you haven't seen that video, please go and check it out so you know what <laughs> we're talking about. This won't make any sense at all if you haven't seen it. <laughs> no. Here we go. And here we go. This is what we're doing today. We're glazing, painting, showing you what you need to know when you get to this bit of the process. Process. Yummy. And there's so wow. many different things that you can do once you yeah. get to this part. It's important that if you are using glazes and paints and things on your can, like your textured pieces, you need to seal them first. Mm. So what would you use as a sealant? Well, I just used a product called Binder Medium. There's several versions of that. It's just basically acrylic medium. And to show where I was going, I put a little bit of pink pigment in it so it just exaggerated the texture a little. So let's go through the process here. So the first bit of course is mixing up what you need, what you want to be using. What have you got here? You've bit got... Of purple. I'm making, <laughs> mixing purple. And is yeah. this just straight paint? It is just acrylic paint with a little bit of water, not much, and lots of medium which helps seal it, you see. Because okay. you can see how dry, see how patchy that white is, and I'm just doing a test patch with paper. Good idea, lets you know how strong the pigment is and how transparent it is. Mm. And I'm happy with that, so away we go. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of planning with this. We just started with the texture, which also I was just flying by the seat of my pants. I thought, let's try a bit of this, try a bit of that. Yeah. You saw that on the other video. Now we're chucking a bit of color around and you have to really work hard to get it into the grooves. Yeah, that's I wasn't what I... really painting it that quickly. They've cleverly <laughs> sped it up. I wish I could paint that fast. That would be amazing. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's an important point is that because the paint that you're using also, that's got the sealer in it, mm. like the mixture. Mm. So you do need to kind of get into all those little nooks and crannies to mm. try and, yeah. Otherwise you get white pokey bits. There's some. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes you, you don't see them immediately. Now we're doing this trick called wipe back. Yeah, so why did you do this? Well, it exaggerates. I didn't just want it to be a dark blue thing. I wanted to take advantage of all that fabulous texture we spent hours on. Yeah. So we grab a, a cloth and we just keep wiping it back. You can wipe it back as much as you like. Um, if you do so, you need to dampen the cloth slightly, but I wanted to keep it fairly high contrast and as a fairly dark base. See, I've just put some fluid in there. That's more of the acrylic resin and then just a glug of water. Not mm. much, otherwise you, um, you reduce the adhesion of the paint if you put too much water in. Oh, okay. But a little bit of water's all right. Otherwise, so I don't actually like using acrylic and pigment by itself is a bit too bit too sticky. So I'm doing a test patch here just to see how transparent it is, seeing how it looks over the other colours in case I want to double up. Mm -hmm. Not so important with this because I've kept it separate, but when you're working realistically you need to you don't want to put too much on yeah. which obliterates stuff and you can't really layer over the top. Okay. This is about layering and um, You'll see later, I, once it's all sealed off and in its base colours, I then muck around with it and build on those colours and go back and over the top, just paint the lumpy bits and leave the others. I did mm. have a question though um, about the speed of how you're having to work, especially when it comes to this wiping back bit, mm. because when you initially put the texture on the canvas boards, you had to work quite quickly. Mm. Um, so is it a similar case here when you're applying um, the paints and glazes and things? If anything, it's even, you have to work. See, I've, I've done it in two separate sections. I didn't do the blue and leave it and then do the purple. I did the blue, wiped it back, 
Then I did the purple and wiped it back. You can see here, that's what it looks like when you pull back. Mm. And um, what it does, it gets into the grooves, exaggerates the texture a little bit, makes those little shapes float above the surface a bit more. And that sets it up. Oh, there's a, I missed a bit. See that? <laughs> have to go back in there and fix that later. And, mm. uh, and it does happen. You've just got to keep, um, keep playing with it. I do fix it in the end. Yeah, I've seen you kept finished, on working it. <laughs> finished products, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, now you're going to work on the oh, next no, that one. Color. Yeah. Oh, this is the next panel. This is the next panel, which is like the lizard skin or oh, the... Oh, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's you. And I noticed also you picked a different brush for yep. this one. So before you're using quite a, a hard bristled brush, this one is a little bit soft. Well, it's a bit softer. It is a bit softer, mainly because the surface is not so extreme. Uh, you remember with the first one where I hit it with forks and all sorts of things. This was just our first simple exercise where we just used my fishnet stockings and whoosh, took it off. Onion mm. bag, actually. Onion bag. Yeah. And see, so I add a little bit more of the fluid and a little bit more water, just testing to see how transparent it was. I wanted a bit of transparency with this so that I could get a more efficient white back. I do funny buggers with this later. You have to say that. I don't know. Well, we've said it you now. just did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because with the surfacing, it's just a simple little exercise. This was just to show what you could do. I would love to see what you end up doing with this because I'm just making, I'm doing a little bit of lizard skin or dragon skin mm. or snake skin and to exaggerate that once it's been thoroughly blocked in like that, all the nooks and crannies taken care of and wiped back, um, then I do something a bit sneaky using another product which is um, it's a, it's a gloss medium, but it actually has an opalescence in it too, which uh, catches the light, which is ideal when you're doing um, textured things. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of using metallics and opalescences and fluoros and all those things. I think uh, you get tired of them, but in some situations it is... It's, it's a good idea. Yeah. I'm redoing this corner because yeah. yeah. once it was wiped back, it really didn't have much purpose to it. And I deliberately left a little bit floating in midair there anyway uh, because I was chasing the fragmentary thing. And then by this time, I've decided what I'm actually going to do with it. Because mm -hmm. trust okay. me, I didn't have a clue when I started. I was just mucking around with textures. You just textures. figure it out as you're sort of mm. working it. Nicking around the edges, just that's just yeah. too tight. I'm, I'm sort of thinking ahead and realising that if I don't do it now, it's going to be awkward. I'm looking for little spots that I missed. See little bubbles of white? There's one. Yeah. I've kind of got a rough idea of where this is going, so I'm just doing a tidy up as I go. Mm -hmm. Now there's a little, see the tiny little pockets? I get rid of them later. But that gives you an idea of the depth of texture yeah. now. And uh, I kind of like that. I think it's quite rich. Mm. You can vary how much you wipe back. You, as I said with the other one, you can damp the cloth and wipe it back almost to white if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, I think we do that with the fash. Yes, there yeah. will be one more video in this series. More mm. structured in terms of the like what it looks like because yeah. these are very abstract pieces but started off with a design and then fiddled with it yeah mm. so that's coming up okay this is an important bit in case you want to save your paints and your glazes and things at the end of the day while well, putting them all inside a glass jar they like need something. to be sealed it needs to be a sealable jar it can be plastic and lastly it's very important that you do this bit where <laughs> you actually wipe the lip of the jar or the container. This is true. Because otherwise you won't get the lid off again. Or you'll, you'll be Look a bit of a struggle. my grotty hands, they're disgusting. <laughs> that just shows you what you've, you've been painting. Fortunately, been this it. stuff lifts right off with warm water and the natural oils in the skin just takes it off and it's not toxic. So it's not like oil paint which can bite into your hands. It's uh, 
Ah, uh, yeah. Good. And the final product oh. where Dad has added <laughs> more of, yeah, some metallics mm. to it as well. So the circle one. In the case of like the circle piece, which <laughs> we haven't shown you the bulk of that being painted. Um, you just got painted. a quick glimpse of it. Yeah, but that just also goes to show same you. Same procedure. Same procedure, adding different types of paints, metallics, um, fluoro. Yeah, there's some fun stuff going Blue on fluoro. with that too. Well, it sort of looks fluoro, but it isn't. Just bright, <laughs> contrasting. Next time we are going to have the fish happening, so please tune in for the fish. Go the fish. Go the fish. Like, subscribe, tell us what you think in the comments down below, and... We'll see you next time. Indeed. Bye. Bye. <laughs>